Hey what's going on guys Tanmaya for simple snippets and welcome back to a new video tutorial in core java programming and yes guys today we are starting off with a very important concept in java programming that is multi threading in java programming so this is basically a part 1 of multi threading in java programming and since multi threading is a big concept i'll make two three videos under multi threading so today is just going to be the theory part so we'll just understand what is multi threading basically what is thread and we'll go through the thread life cycle so it's going to be theory and it's not going to be practical we are not going to be programming anything but it is very important that we understand this concept because this is one of the most striking features of core java programming that is it supports multi threading and we need to understand it thoroughly before we actually get into the practical aspect so if you are new on this channel and if you are new to core java programming and if you've been following this entire playlist make sure you watch this video till the end even if it is just theory it will be a very short video because we have to understand the concept and if you already know what multi threading is and you know the thread life cycle you can skip this video and move on to the next video wherein we'll actually implement this and we'll see how to implement multi threading in terms of the practical aspect but yeah, i would recommend that you go through this video till the end so that you get a good idea about what multi threading is what are the different life cycle phases of a thread what exactly is a thread and how it works so yeah with that being said let's start off with today's topic quickly open up simple snippets dot tech that is our official website under the courses in the core job programming you will find this article so this is our official website and what i'll do is i'll just drop this link in the video description so that so that you can directly move on to this article so yeah let me just zoom in a little bit and we'll start off with a little bit of theory so this as i mentioned is just going to be an introduction so multi threading in java is a process of executing multiple threads simultaneously so the name itself gives it away right multi threading means multiple threads which are being processed or executed simultaneously so as i mentioned multi threading is a java feature that allows concurrent execution of two or more parts of a program for maximum utilization of cpu so such kind of scenarios come into picture when there are multiple processes to be carried out or multiple tasks to be carried out simultaneously let me give you an example let's say you're playing a multiplayer game right so in that your opponent is also moving and you, even you are moving right so that happens simultaneously so that could be a case of multitasking which is achieved via multi threading and we'll talk about multitasking also so that is one example or let's say for example you are working on some application basically you are running an application and in the background you are also updating the application so there would be one thread which would download the new latest updates even though you are working on some other part that background download is happening simultaneously right so that is another case of multi threading and then there are many such use cases so what exactly is a thread then so a thread is basically a lightweight sub process a smallest unit of processing so even if you open up your task manager let me just show you there are multiple processes and threads that are running so you can see these are the number of processes already running you can see the services so all of these are multiple processes and threads running simultaneously in your system so thread is basically a lightweight sub process so a process is a larger entity and inside a process there can be multiple threads okay so multi processing and multi threading both are used to achieve multitasking and multitasking basically means performing multiple tasks at the same time or simultaneously so we use multi threading rather than multi processing because thread share a common memory area so as i mentioned thread is the smallest unit right so it's lightweight and it's fast because what happens is it shares some common memory area whereas processes share, share to different areas so we'll see that in a minute in a visual diagram also so they don't allocate separate memory areas to save memory and the context switching between the threads take less time than the process so switching between two threads is much faster compared to switching between two processes because they are located at different memory locations so multitasking as i mentioned is a process of executing multiple tasks simultaneously concurrently and we use multitasking to utilize the cpu so most of the times if you see your cpu is idle and it's not 100% used so even if you open up your task manager right away in the performance tab you can see my cpu is still just 42% utilized even though i am recording the screen and i have opened up chrome i still have 50% left and if i just turn off the recording the cpu would go around 5 to 10% only so that's how underutilized our cpu is so multitasking helps us to utilize that cpu to its full extent okay 
and this can be done via process based multitasking or that is multi processing and thread based multitasking that is multi threading so as i mentioned there are certain advantages of java multi threading so it doesn't block the user because threads are independent and you can perform multiple operations at the same time so use case would be your application is running and behind the scenes there is one thread that is also updating the application there is one thread that is updating data from the database and there is some thread which is downloading some images or some data from some other resource so all three can be achieved concurrently using multi threading so this will save a lot of time and since threads are independent it would not affect each other even if there is some issue in one thread it will not affect the another thread so these are some advantages so again coming back to the question what is a thread as i mentioned i'll show you a visual representation in the most simple terms a thread is a lightweight sub process a smallest unit of processing so you can see here process 1 and process 2 are there in blue and inside process 1 we have three threads so inside this one memory area we have three different threads which are interacting with each other you can see thread t1 t2 and t3 and then we have process p2 which has two threads thread t1 and t2 now communication between t1 t2 and t3 is much faster compared to communication between process p1 and process p2 the communication between p1 and p2 is known as inter process communication this is just the term you need to remember and as shown is the figure thread is executed inside the process right so there has to be a process which would have the threads and the context switching between the threads is much faster compared to switching between processes so this was a little bit about the theory on multi threading and why we need multi threading what is multitasking what are processes versus what are threads and some advantages so in java basically when we create a thread because it supports multi threading right so we are going to be creating threads and we are going to be running multiple threads simultaneously so in java there are basically five states that is the entire life cycle starting from the creation of the thread till the termination of that thread there are different stages or phases you can say also known as thread states so there are five states and the life cycle of thread is controlled by jvm and the states are as follows there is new there is runnable running non runnable blocked or waiting and terminated so here's the diagram so initially when you create the thread it's new okay it's in the new state we haven't yet started it or the thread is not yet started running the next state is runnable now a slight difference between runnable and running is that let's say you have three different threads and all of them are new and you've said that i want to start all three okay so there is a method or function which is start which would actually initiate the running of the thread or whatever code you have inside the thread so however what happens is at one single time the scheduler the, which is a program which selects one of the thread out of the three will select only one at a time even though there would be a switching between three threads at one time only one thread is going to run right behind the scenes what happens is there is switching which happens very fast so you think that all the threads are running continuously however there is switching happening between them very fast so at a time one thread is going to be selected and other two are going to be in the runnable state which means that they are ready to run but they are not yet selected by the scheduler to run okay and then we have the running state which means that the thread has started executing and performing the task it is being assigned for and after the execution when the run method executes and it's done it's called terminated so that thread is destroyed and between that we also have a blocked or wait state so let's say one thread is going to be writing in your file however that file is not yet opened so that thread can be paused and some other thread will actually open the file so in the meantime the first thread is going to be in the block or wait state so you can see sleep or blocked or waiting from some input output operation to happen so in that case your thread can be paused or blocked or it can be in a wait state all of them are the same so in that case your thread is going to be in the block or wait state and once that sleep is done or the task is done or the input output operation is done it can again go into the runnable state and then in the running state so this is a cycle over here you can see via the arrows and after completion it will be terminated so these are the five different states and the theory again about them is over here let me just read it out quickly so the thread is in new state if you create an instance of thread class and this we'll see in the practical aspect as i mentioned we have to create an object of thread class but it's not yet started by using the start method okay so that's the new state then the runnable state as i mentioned the thread is in runnable state after invocation of start method but the thread scheduler 
has not yet selected it to be running to be running or to be in the running state right so that's what i was telling that the thread schedule, scheduler picks one thread at a time so until then it is in the runnable state then we have the running state so the thread is running state if the thread scheduler has selected it and it started executing whatever code is there inside that thread then we have the non runnable or block or wait state so this state is arrived or achieved when the thread is still alive but it's not currently performing its task or performing the code which is there inside the thread or it is paused because of some other thread which is blocking it or some task or it's just waiting for something to happen so it's not basically eligible to run and lastly we have terminated so this thread is terminated or dead state when the run method is exited that is it completes whatever it has to execute okay and that's when it is terminated so yeah this was a little bit about theory on multi threading this was just an introduction to multi threading in java so we talked about what is multi threading what is multitasking how it is achieved we talked about the difference between processes and threads and we also took a detailed view about the life cycle of thread by taking a visual representation of the diagram and understanding the five different states so that's it for this video guys i hope you understood the theory part in the next video we'll try to implement multi threading in the practical aspect basically there are two different ways in which you can do that so in the next video we'll see method number 1 and then after that we'll see method number 2 that's it for this video guys i hope you like this video if you have any doubts you can put them in the comment section if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments that you like this video share it with your friends and if you haven't yet subscribed make sure you subscribe to this channel because there are a lot of it video tutorials coming soon on this channel so you'll get notified whenever i upload a new video on this channel thanks for watching i'll talk to you guys in the next video tutorial peace